Peptide bioregulators for enhancing human health. Today, we're going to look at testolutin, which is an unknown bioregulator peptide that has some pretty remarkable effects on human health. So what is testolutin? Well, testolutin is a supplement based on natural peptides isolated from the testicles of healthy reproductive young bulls. Now, peptides in the complex have a molecular weight of up to 5,000 Daltons. And testolutin bioregulator is intended for the recovery of the male reproductive system. So ultimately, we're looking at uh, like curing like or like treats like, which is a saying. And so testolutin is a bioregulator peptide. And to understand its potential effects, it's really important for us to understand what a bioregulator is. Now, guys, I have also made a video about Libidon, another bioregulator. So this information about what a bioregulator is and their history is a bit of a repeat if you've already watched the Libidon video. Now, bioregulated peptides are short chains of two to four amino acids that due to their small size can cross the cell and nuclear membranes to bind directly to DNA. Now, this action is believed to trigger the upregulation or rejuvenation of the specific gland or organ that they target. Now, each bioregulator is derived from the organ it aims to support. For instance, testolutin, comes from the testes of young calves, and as a result is designed to rejuvenate the testes of humans. Now, over the past 40 years, numerous bioregulators have been developed, including those derived from the thymus, pancreas, vascular tissues, eye tissues, testes, and thyroid gland. And the history of peptide bioregulators is both intriguing and controversial, so let's dive into it. The history of bioregulator peptides. In the 1980s, while serving as a medical colonel in the Soviet army, Professor Vladimir Kavinson was presented with a unique challenge. The Kremlin was concerned about new American weapons that threatened soldiers' health, such as blinding lasers and low-level radiation exposure affecting submariners and missile operators. Kavinson was tasked with developing protective and rejuvenative solutions for military personnel, which ultimately contributed to advancements in anti-aging medicine. Through his research, Kavinson discovered that short-chain peptides play a vital role in the body, acting as signaling molecules for specific organs. These peptides function like gene switches, reactivating various biological processes, and can be ingested and absorbed into the bloodstream, offering numerous health benefits. Interestingly, Kavinson reportedly had connections to Putin before his death earlier this year, Throughout his career, he claimed to have over 800 publications, although many are difficult to access due to being in Russian or not widely available online. Among the most well-known bioregulator peptides is epitalon, derived from the pineal gland, which has been studied for its potential lifespan-extending properties in humans. There is a lot of information that I present here on my YouTube channel. However, if you wanna know exactly what protocols are best for your unique biology, then I suggest booking in a free Boost Your Biology Strategy session with a senior member of my team as we'll start to map out and strategize the best action plan for your unique biology. You'll see that linked down below in the video description. Now, what about research on bioregulators broadly? Now, I did mention that there is some controversy with biopeptide research. Peptide bioregulators have been criticized for a lack of accessible research and clinical studies and while there are many studies on some more popular bioregulators, such as those derived from the thymus and pineal gland, for some bioregulators, including testolutin, there is less research. Further, many of the studies have been carried out by Vladimir Kavinson, who is the inventor and also is financially invested in the supplements. Importantly, the studies on bioregulators from the thymus and pineal gland have shown an increase in life for animal models, and there has been some studies in humans which has shown a lower mortality rate in the epithelon group over a 15-year follow-up. Kavinson also claims that over 15 million people have taken bioregulator peptides without side effects. However, I was unfortunately unable to find the direct study where he tested it on this number of people. Literature indicates that peptide bioregulators lead to tissue-specific stimulation of protein synthesis in the cells of the organs. One mechanism of aging is a reduction in protein synthesis in cells and treatment from these peptides has been shown to be capable of assisting with the recovery of main functions of the organs or glands.
So what we see here is another chapter from a textbook which delves into the findings of peptide bioregulators. So it says, short peptides regulate gene expression, protein synthesis, and enhance lifespan. So here's a clinical trial for testolutin. Now this human study was completely in Russian, so I did have to translate the whole thing myself, but the study findings are fascinating. This study was conducted by Cavinson in 2011 and is titled, Clinical Study on the Effectiveness of the Dietary Supplement Testolutin in Male Menopause. This study was conducted to evaluate testolutin's effectiveness in treating male menopause, also known as andropause, characterized by hormonal changes, reduced libido, and other age-related symptoms. The clinical study involved 36 men aged 47 to 65 years diagnosed with male menopause. Participants were divided into two groups, a control group receiving standard therapy or 14 patients, and a main group receiving testolutin in addition to standard therapy, which is 22 patients. Testolutin was administered at a dose of one capsule twice daily for 30 days. Patients' complaints were assessed dynamically, including general clinical blood and urine tests, biochemical blood analysis, hormone levels measured by radioimmunoassay, and prostate gland examination. Ejaculate analysis was also conducted to assess sperm count, motility, and abnormalities. Testolutin significantly increased levels of luteinizing hormone, follicle-stimulating hormone, and testosterone in the main group, whereas the control group showed only minor improvements. Patients receiving testolutin reported improved overall well-being, increased libido, and reductions in symptoms such as fatigue, emotional instability, irritability, headaches, excessive sweating, and blood pressure fluctuations. Testolutin led to an increase in sperm count and motility, a decrease in pathological sperm forms, and a reduction in leukocyte counts in the ejaculate. No side effects, complications, or dependency were reported during the study, suggesting that testolutin is safe for oral use. As I mentioned, in this trial, there was also no reported side effects. Unfortunately, this was the only study I could find on testolutin. So what have people said about their use of testolutin bioregulated peptide? Now, there's generally not too many reputable reviews online for testolutin. However, I did manage to find two Reddit users who reported their experiences. Obviously, this isn't a super high level of research. So Ben said that testolutin worked well and he noticed a boost in testosterone, libido, back acne, and also anger. Another count also actually used testolutin very recently and noticed it felt like a testosterone booster. So here are the potential risks of bioregulators. After considerable research, I was unable to find any studies which found that peptide bioregulators have had harmful effects and no ill health effects have been reported in several studies. However, there is generally a lack of studies conducted outside of Russia. As always, it is important to take care when choosing a supplement manufacturer to ensure product purity. Some studies have noted that peptides more broadly are unlikely to cause serious side effects as they are similar to peptides present in everyday foods. You guys also know I do love Reddit. And while this certainly does not count as strong evidence, the comments generally seem neutral or positive about bioregulator peptides. I do wanna also mention that there is a multi-year experiment conducted in America on bioregulator peptides by Dr. Bill Lawrence that is currently underway. The study has not been published, but Dr. Lawrence has gone on various podcasts talking about the preliminary results, which look very promising regarding both improving methylation and telomere length for participants in the study. And from his interviews, it seems like there's been no adverse effects. However, we are still waiting on this study to be published. I'd love to get him on my podcast to interview him about these results. So how are bioregulators taken? The original bioregulator peptides are taken orally although injectable bioregulator peptides have been developed. Professor Cavinson believes that bioregulator peptides are orally available, which is pretty amazing. As always, before trying any new supplement, it is important to consult with your doctor. For preventive purposes, people often take one to two capsules one to two times a day, 15 to 20 minutes before meals, and the average course duration is one month. So in summary, when we look at testolutin as a bioregulator peptide, it may be worthwhile exploring as part of a testosterone boosting stack or a male reproductive health protocol. And it wouldn't surprise me if there's some beneficial effects on supporting male fertility. If we had a semen analysis or a sperm analysis competition, we probably would see that testolutin would increase sperm count, sperm motility, and different um, sexual 
health parameters there. So that pretty much wraps up today's video on testolutin. If you did enjoy this video, please leave a comment down below. Otherwise, guys, I'll see you in the next video.